Uh, and essentially, I was really never, you know, I, I, I had no business background. I had no interest in nonprofit, you know, for profit, even making that distinction. But for various reasons, that became a, a value for us. So the nonprofit side of what we do is to create a scaffolding for uh, local communities to self organize. So for people who become inspired around this idea of this new planetary culture and this emergence, they have a, a network to plug into. Uh, where they can learn from other people who are organizers and we keep collecting and developing and discovering the best practices of how to spread information. You know, and, and it can be very difficult. I mean, it depends on where you live. Like, um, we talked to somebody yesterday, uh, teachers from uh, Brownsville, Texas, and they were talking about how really nobody in their community could understand, you know, DMT, the spirit molecule, or ayahuasca. They're just not ready for it. They're not, they're not in that. They're, they're living on a more you know, low level of just trying to satisfy their basic needs. You know, so potentially the way to approach people in, in that state would be, you know, well, how do you start growing some of your own food? You know, how, how do you start taking care of yourself? You know, how do, you know educating them about the, uh, the diet, you know, which I'm, I'm, I'm you know, in, in, in Brownsville, Texas, is probably, you know, pretty oriented, you know, and so on. And, and, and so they have better tools, you know? Um, I mean, the Dalai Lama once said that, um, um, you know, you, 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 the only way that uh, you can, you, you can, you know, help people to, um, wait, I think I'm getting this wrong, fuck. Um, the only way that you can help people to, yeah, you, know, you, ha you have to, actually you have to show people a way to a better life. And if you show them the way to the better life, then they'll take it, you know? So those of us here have to recognize that we have responsibility. You know, if we're the ones who've gained like a higher level of insight or understanding, you know, of what, of, of the changes that are happening and the ones that also need to take place, you know, we then actually have a community responsibility, as much as it sucks, as much as we don't want to be responsible in, in certain ways or at some times, to share that information and, and, to, and to help, you know, bring about this change in a, in a, in a positive and, and, and swift way, uh, which I think could, could take place, you know. So, um, I could actually, I'd love to take some questions. Um, Anybody have a question? Uh, oh, but by, by the way, I can be um, kind of, um, yeah, keep it to a question. Because sometimes people will start ranting off in a direction around uh, ayahuasca or their trip stories or past synchronicities. And I'd rather if they could just keep it, you know, hone in on a question or a subject. <laughs> so what I was asking was, um, do you think it's possible that the huge profits the Boom Festival generates could be used to uh, basically create a permanent permaculture community for people in Portugal or in any other country in Europe? Well, I, I, think, I think that's what they're thinking about doing, but I don't really know enough about their plans. You know, but I, I know they have a 10-year lease on the land. And yeah, I, I mean, um, you know, I, I would imagine something like that is, is in the works for here, but I, I don't know for a fact. Another question? I would just like to correct the boom does not make a huge profit. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> at yeah. all, yeah. at all. It just breaks even when it goes well. Okay, um, a quick question. Um, you said and that uh, I, I found it quite, uh, quite, quite good, it's quite positive that, that we have a responsibility to Yeah, to carry that on into into our circles but what to do then okay responsibility all right but um do we sit then at home and meditate or well yeah so i i don't think i can you know answer that prescriptively because it's clearly different from every person for every person and i think you basically have to you know explore your own like inner guidance you know for some people it might be you know starting an echo village or contributing in that way you know for others it might be you know being a legal counsel, you know, for people who are getting fucked over, you know. Um, I mean, Evolver is, is my model, you know, for, for how, to, how to participate, you know. Um, we looked at a other, I mean, there are other great ones too. There's Transition Town. Do people know about Transition Town? Yeah. yeah. So that's a model, I mean, 
they don't they don't they don't take into account kind of like the sh the, the, the the shamanism consciousness and psychedelic aspects of what we're we're talking about but on the other hand that makes it more palatable maybe to the mainstream but simply looking at it you know on a, on, a, on a material resource basis you know with climate change and peak oil and the economic crash you know how how do local communities uh, you know reorganize and develop themselves so they can you know create healthy and sustainable regenerative models you know so transition town talks about things like reskilling you know bringing back lost old artisanal skills and so on you know I, I think I think really that is one of the um, shifts uh, in, in in this understanding is it is, is relocalization you know on, on a very deep level is part of it and actually creating your your, your you know your utopia where you are uh, would be I think the the great solution you know? <laughs> another question so I want to say, I mean, you're welcome. Please uh, sign up with uh, our mailing list for Evolver if you want, or you can check it out when you're back home. Um, you know, you can pick up uh, our, 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 our leaflets and look at it. Um, we also have a web magazine, uh, Reality Sandwich, and we've been doing um, interactive video teleseminars. I mean, essentially this whole pro project for me happened very organically in that um, you know, when I wrote Breaking Open the Head in 2012, I started to get tremendous uh, amounts of email from people who had like such extraordinary stories and kind of uh, ideas, and I felt they were only sending them to me because there was no place in the culture where they could get a real response. So, so I first had a forum on, on my Breaking Open the Head discussion board, and then you know, on, on realitysandwich.com is our web magazine, you know, to, to allow for the, the issues around these areas of, of consciousness, you know, visionary culture, shamanism, ayahuasca, and so on, to really be expressed at the full level of depth that they need to be expressed at and to have, you know, exchange in the, in the comments afterwards. And so when we started Reality Sandwich in 2007, we then recognized that the community was trying to find each other. Like, we'd see these comments like, I'm in, I'm in Des Moines, Idaho, and I don't know anybody who thinks about any of this stuff. You know, is anybody else out there who's reading this, you know, want to connect? You know, so, so, so um, we then created Evolver to develop a kind of scaffolding uh, for people to, to connect. Um, and um, yeah, so, so actually Robin is here. Do you want to talk about it for like five, ten minutes? Oh, sorry, question first. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, thanks for your talk, first of all. Um, my question goes in the Where direction... Where are you? Can you wave your hand or something? It's like it's I'm down here. Shit. you got to get out of the light. Yeah, 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 okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, got it. Thanks. Um, I think pretty much everyone that's sitting here knows about the responsibility they can have in the direction of, um, you know, living in a more sustainable way or more connected in a spiritual way and so on. But you mentioned also the whole social aspect and also the question of love and sexuality. And I would like to pick your brain a little bit on that. And how does that go together with, for example, the psychedelic uh, movement that you mentioned also? Well, that's a great question. And actually, as, as uh, we were just discussing backstage, um, you know, I would say both, well, you know, Love and sexuality, and the, the you know investigation of psychedelics, you know share in common that there are ways of, of achieving uh, non ordinary states of consciousness, um, and and as we know, as Charles also talked about in the last talk, like that's supernatural for humans. We just want to explore these different uh, intense states of, of, of awareness. Um, so yeah, so so you know, the, 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 can you, can you ask actually sharpen your question a little bit? What do you want to know? <laughs> I mean, my, my real interest would be to, to hear from you, what do you think? I mean, obviously there's shitloads of books about permaculture, about alternative money systems, but yeah, what about the other parts? What about the social aspect, especially within the social aspect, the question of power, sexuality, partnership, love, so on, and what's really a new direction within this area well I would say like um, you know uh, probably like uh, you know e even 
much further than we've gone to before, kind of liberating women, you know, to have freedom to, uh, you know, to express and, and, and to kind of uh, define, you know, how, how, how they also see this, you know, this, this emergent new paradigm, you know. Um, I mean, I'm super interested, like I have a book up here, 